Having already explored some of the configuration controls for our 3DS Max viewports, we want, in this video, to focus a little more closely on the Nitrous Realistic Mode, and essentially take a look at how we can use the options available here to improve the visual feedback that we get from our viewports, and so hopefully, increase our productivity. If you are wondering whether or not a viewport can actually do that, just imagine how much time could be saved on a typical project if the lighting and texturing phases required only a fraction of the usual number of test renders to be made. Well, that really is what the Nitrous Realistic Mode can potentially do for us. To follow along in 3ds Max, open up the Nitrous Viewports.Max scene file from your Working Files folder. Because the Nitrous Direct 3D Engine is enabled by default in the 2014 versions of both 3ds Max and Max Design, getting up and running with Nitrous is as easy and simple as starting up 3ds Max itself. Let's start to remedy the lack of quality currently seen in our viewports by clicking the Shading Viewport Label menu and coming down to the Configuration option. The Visual Style and Appearance tab that we are taken into houses a number of the controls that we will want to make use of here. One very quick way to create a drastic change in the look of our scene would be to alter the lighting setup that is currently being used in the viewport. At this moment in time, you can see by looking at the Lighting and Shadows controls that we are currently set up to use the default lights that 3ds Max creates in each new scene. These, of course, can be set up in a single or dual light configuration. If we are wanting to improve productivity by cutting down on the number of test renders being made, then we are obviously going to need to alter this behavior and be able to work instead with the lighting rigs that we create in our scenes. Doing so is as simple as putting a check in the Scene Lights option and clicking the Apply to Active View button. If your first click produces odd results, just simply click a second time and things should work fine. Instantly, the quality of our lighting changes as 3ds Max is now making use of the Mental Ray Daylight System and the single Omni Light that are in the scene. Very clearly, Nitrous also starts to make use of any exposure settings that may be set up. If we just dismiss the Viewport Configuration dialog by clicking OK and press the 8 key to bring up the Environment and Effects controls, you can see we are using a Mental Ray Photographic Exposure, which, if temporarily disabled, shows that Nitrous is indeed using exposure right in the viewport. This instantly means that our viewport and final render lighting is bound to match much more closely. Let's re-enable our exposure and then close the dialog and reopen our viewport configuration controls. Let's see if we can improve the viewport look a little further. At this moment in time, the illumination from our Omni light is passing straight through all of the scene geometry and producing a very unconvincing all-round illumination effect. To make things behave a little more realistically, let's put a check in the Shadows option and again click to apply to the active view. Now, any shadow casting geometry blocks light just as it would in a final render. We do still, however, retain the ability to lower the intensity or fade the shadows if we want or need to. Another enhancement that brings us closer to the quality of a final render is the option to enable ambient occlusion in the viewport. This can really help accentuate geometry detail within the scene. To enable AO, as it is often called, let's put a check in the box and apply the changes to the active view. Straight away, we see the surface detail in the background terrain become much more noticeable. We also gain access to a couple of ambient occlusion controls, including a radius setting that determines how far the AO effect extends. The final two controls that we want to enable determine how reflections will look in the viewport. Before we enable those, however, there is one very important material editor option that we need to have enabled. For reflections to show up in the viewport, we need to enable the Realistic Materials with Maps option. To do this, let's dismiss the configuration dialog and then hit the X key to bring up the global command search. In the search field, we can type Real, and from the list that appears, left click to select the Realistic Materials with Maps option. Once Nitrous caches the materials, everything pops nicely into view. Finally, then, let's bring back the viewport configuration dialog and enable, first of all, the Reflections from Environment option, applying that to the active view. And then, put a check in the Highlights box and apply that change also. 
What we see now is an extremely high level of material, lighting and shading feedback. In fact, if we take a render using the Quicksilver engine right now by hitting the render button, you can see in the finished image just how close viewport and render can be made to match. We can even hit the F10 key to bring up the render setup dialog and switch in the comment tab over to the mental ray engine. And again, hit the render button. What we get, aside from a little more detail in the global illumination and materials, is very comparable indeed to what we are seeing in the viewport. The benefits that can come from using nitrous are quite literally there for all to see. Of course, not every artist's workflow will need or benefit from the features available in nitrous realistic mode. But if modeling, texturing, lighting, and even animation are parts of the production process that we are or want to be involved in, then we will most certainly want to make good use of the features available in the nitrous realistic mode.